From fish to plants to zoanthids, there's a lot of dangerous stuff that lurks below the water. On today's top 10 list, we will be covering the top 10 deadliest substances underwater you shouldn't touch. Starting off this list, in our number 10 spot, we have the Comb Sea Star. These guys may appear to be like sweet little peach from Finding Nemo, but they most definitely are way more terrifying and dangerous. Also sometimes referred to as the Sand Sifting Star, these guys are a sea star that is the most widespread in their genus, which is found throughout the Indo-Pacific region. These guys are bottom dwellers, which usually means if you're coming into contact with one, it's likely accidental, so it's super important to be on the lookout for them. These guys have spines on them which can obviously cause injury to the skin and their venom is in a gelatinous form around the spiny areas. The venom they possess is a powerful neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin and since it's the most well known of all of the marine toxins, it will definitely be one we talk about again today. This neurotoxin is a sodium channel blocker which means that it prevents the nervous system from carrying messages which then translates to your muscles being prevented from contracting in response to nervous stimulation. If a lethal dose of this toxin has been ingested, symptoms will likely be present within 17 minutes, and they include things like gastrointestinal symptoms, sweating, headache, tremor, paralysis, and eventual death. This is all to say, although these guys might look relatively harmless, those spikes are scarier than any of us might have thought. In our number 9 spot today, we have pufferfish. These are a fish that isn't necessarily a major threat to you if you're casually swimming on by, but because they're considered a culinary delicacy, their toxicity gets a little bit more dicey if you aren't quite sure what you're doing. If prepared incorrectly, the ingestion of pufferfish can be lethal because they contain the same powerful neurotoxin, tetrodotoxin, and some certain puffers also contain saxitoxin, which is another powerful neurotoxin. This one is also a sodium channel blocker, and it acts on voltage-gated sodium channels of neurons, which then prevents normal cellular function, which then leads to paralysis. When a lethal dose of pufferfish has been ingested, first the tongue and lips will become numb, which will then be followed by dizziness and vomiting, with the whole body slowly going numb. Eventually the toxin will paralyze the diaphragm, which will stop the person who has ingested it from breathing. If someone lives longer than 24 hours after ingestion, it is likely that they will survive, although coma might last still for several days. While the exact source of where pufferfish get their toxin has been long debated, at the moment the most widely accepted answer is that it is coming from a bacteria that exists in their intestine. Tract. In our number 8 spot today we have the yellow boxfish. These guys are a species of boxfish that can be found in the reefs throughout the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean as well as the southeastern Atlantic Ocean. And to be honest, they aren't necessarily the most poisonous fish on this list, but its method of poisoning can be a cause for concern. When threatened or even just stressed out, these guys release their poison, tetrodotoxin, which we all know about, but the release is less than strategic. There's essentially no aim and they just shoot it out, swim away, and hope for the best. This is kind of hilarious in theory, but unfortunately this causes a lot of accidental poisonings to both human and other fish alike. In our number 7 spot today we have water hemlock. Water hemlock is a genus of 4 species of highly poisonous plants that like to grow in wet meadows, on the banks of streams, or really any wet and marshy area. Sometimes referred to as cowbane or poison parsnip, the members of this genus contain a toxin that is called sicutoxin. This causes central nervous systems stimulatory effects like seizures. The toxin is present in all parts of this plant, however it is most concentrated in the roots of it. The ingestion of this plant can be fatal in humans and there are actually reports in medical literature that document severe poisonings and death from water hemlock as far back as 1670. Although less common, poisoning can still occur through skin contact, so this plant is surely one that is best to stay away from entirely. In our number 6 spot today we have the flower urchin. These guys are a widespread and common encountered species of sea urchin from the Indo-West Pacific. They like to make their homes in coral reef and seagrass beds or rocky and sandy environments. The toxins within the flower urchin are called contractin A, which is found to interfere with the transmission of signals at nerve endings and also causes red blood cells to clump, and the other is a protein toxin called pedotoxin, which can cause muscle relaxation, sedation, and anesthetic coma, and at high doses can cause convulsions and death. These urchins don't have 
spines or spikes to deliver their venom, and instead it is done through what is called globiferous pedicellari. These guys possess really powerful sensors, and when disturbed, they snap shut and inject venom. The amount of venom is said to be directly related to their size, so if you happen to encounter one, I guess I hope it's a small one? I don't know. I just hope we can all steer clear of them entirely. In our number five spot today, we have the button polyp. Also known as green sea mats, these guys are a zoanthid that can usually be found in the shallow reef zones of tropical regions spanning all the way from the Caribbean to southeastern Brazil, but these corals are also often recommended to new marine aquarium owners, but this isn't necessarily great because the health risks associated with owning one can often be underestimated. The most common form of poisoning from these guys is by eating contaminated seafood, but it can also come from direct contact with the skin, eyes, or by inhaling aerosols or steam vapor associated with them. These guys contain palatoxin, which is considered to be one of the most poisonous non-protein substances known, and it is extremely dangerous because it can affect every cell type in the body. Symptoms can range from flu-like symptoms to extreme severe ones, and unfortunately there's no known antidote for it, just general medical treatment and supportive care. In our number four spot today, we have the xanthid crab. These are a family of crabs, sometimes known as gorilla crabs, mud crabs, or pebble crabs, but whatever you call them, they're highly poisonous and contain toxins that cannot be destroyed by cooking. The toxins they possess are similar to the tetrodotoxin and the saxitoxin that are seen in the pufferfish, and it is thought that they are also produced by a bacteria living in symbiosis with the crab. Many members of this crab family are brightly colored, as it is said to be a warning to potential predators of the poison that lurks inside of them. The good news is that they are poisonous rather than venomous, so it can't sting or bite, but eating them can lead to death. In our number three spot today, we have the stonefish. These guys are one of the most venomous known fish, and although they are primarily marine, some species are known to live in rivers. Most of these guys can be found in coral reefs near the tropical Pacific and Indian Oceans. The name of these fish comes from their camouflage color, which allows them to blend in with their surroundings, but unfortunately, because they're so good at disguising themselves, swimmers may not notice or see them and then inadvertently step on them, which can cause a whole slew of issues. When a stonefish is disturbed, it will inject an amount of venom proportional to the amount of pressure it's feeling, and this venom is coming from the glands at the base of their needle-like dorsal fin. The sting of a stonefish is said to be extremely painful, and if left untreated, it certainly can be fatal. The poison within the venom that a stonefish possesses is a proteinaceous toxin called verrucotoxin. The symptoms of this poison include respiratory weakness, damage to the cardiovascular system, convulsions, and paralysis. Although there are many studies that have been done on this toxin, much about how it works and the exact mechanisms of it are not yet fully understood, which just places this already terrifying creature in a cloud of mystery. In our number two spot today, we have stingrays. Stingrays are most common in coastal, tropical, and subtropical marine waters throughout the world, and they are a group of sea rays, which are a kind of fish that are actually related to sharks. There are a wide variety of stingrays, but most of them are not normally aggressive and usually only attack when provoked. Stingrays can have anywhere from one to three blades, and when contact with the spinal blade or blades is made, it causes immediate trauma to the area with a cut, swelling, and muscle cramps from the venom. The venom from a stingray contains the toxins cystatins and galactin. Galactin causes cell death in the victims, while the other one inhibits defense enzymes. This combination can lead to increased blood flow in the superficial capillaries and cell death. In our number one spot today, we have the blue-ringed octopus. These creatures look absolutely stunning, but you should absolutely stay as far away as possible from them. Found in the waters of Australia and Japan, the blue-ringed octopus is just as dangerous as it is unbelievable. These guys can be identified by their yellowish skin that is spotted with rings of gorgeous blue and black that change colors dramatically when the animal feels threatened. Despite their relatively small size, these guys are one of the most venomous marine animals in the world. If provoked, they may bite you. The bite is said to be pretty painless, with many people not even realizing they've been bit until the respiratory depression and paralysis sets in. That's right, these are another creature that has venom locked and loaded with tetrodotoxin, but the blue ringed octopus would put some of the other creatures on this list to shame. These guys are carrying enough venom to kill 26 adult humans within minutes. One thing I failed to mention about tetrodotoxin before is that, as of right now, there's no known antidote, so it's really a game of luck if you encounter one of these creatures. 
just sleep tight with that information. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.